Hello and welcome to Fast and Factual. My name is Utsav Parekh and here are the top stories of the day. US President Joe Biden took shots at Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu in a recent interview. He expressed concerns over Netanyahu's actions in Gaza, calling them a mistake. Biden went on to criticize the Israeli airstrike that killed seven aid workers in Gaza earlier this month. He also urged Netanyahu to call for a temporary ceasefire in the enclave. At least 14 Palestinians have been killed in an airstrike in Gaza's Nusairat refugee camp. This is according to the Palestinian Health Ministry. Airstrikes were also reported in Deir al-Bala in central Gaza and Rafah in the south. Israeli opposition leader Yar Lapid met with U.S. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer. This was during his trip to Washington. Their meeting comes amid growing resistance against Netanyahu. Last month, Schumer criticized Netanyahu and called for fresh elections in Israel. Meanwhile, Israel's former defense minister, Benny Gantz, has also called for, a na for national elections in September. Israel's foreign minister has accused Turkey of violating trade agreements. Turkey recently announced that it will restrict exports of a wide range of products to Israel. This will be until a ceasefire is reached in the Israel-Hamas war. Israel has said that in return, it will impose measures to curb imports from Turkey. U.S. President Joe Biden welcomed Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida to the White House yesterday. The summit between Biden and Kishida is expected to focus on strengthening defense ties between the two countries. The pair will be joined by the President of the Philippines, Ferdinand Marcos Jr., tomorrow. In Thursday's meeting, the leaders are likely to discuss tensions in the South China Sea. Voting is underway in South Korea's parliamentary elections. Polling began at 6 a.m. local time at over 14,000 booths across the country. The country's 44 million voters are choosing who will sit in the 300-member parliament. The election is being seen as a referendum on President Yoon suk yeol amid frustrations over high costs of living, corruption and an ongoing doctor strike. British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak met with Rwandan President Paul Kagame yesterday. This was to discuss Britain's plan to deport asylum seekers to Rwanda. Following the meeting, Sunak's office said that the leaders are looking forward to flights departing for Rwanda in the spring. Sunak wants to deport thousands of asylum seekers to Rwanda. At least four people have died in an explosion at a hydroelectric power plant in Italy. Several people are still missing. The blast occurred at a dam on Lake Suviana. The Italian utility group Enel said that a fire broke out at one of its transformers at the plant. In the U.S. city of Chicago, a new report says that police fired nearly 100 gunshots at an African-American man last month. Newly released body cam footage shows police officers in plain clothes firing 96 shots in about 41 seconds. The police pulled over Dexter Reed for allegedly failing to wear a seatbelt. However, he refused to exit his vehicle. Authorities say that Reed fired first, leading to police retaliation. Bolivian doctors have launched a national strike in protest of a new retirement bill. They claim that the rules will force them to retire when they turn 65 years old instead of at a time of their choosing. However, officials have denied this. They say that the doctors will have to undergo a medical test at 65 to check if they are still fit for duty. This morning, a fire broke out in a residential building in Hong Kong's bustling Kowloon district. At least five people have been killed and more than 20 are injured. Firefighters were seen evacuating people using cranes. The fire has now been put out. South Africa's former president, Jacob Zuma, can run for parliament in the upcoming general election. This is thanks to a ruling by the country's electoral court. South Africa's electoral commission has, uh, had earlier ruled that Zuma could not run for office. This is because he had been sentenced to more than 12 months in prison for contempt of court. The new ruling overturns the earlier ban. 
In Kenya, passengers were stranded for hours on the roof of a bus that was getting submerged in flood water. The passengers were then seen clinging onto ropes to avoid getting swept away. All 51 people aboard the Nairobi-bound bus were eventually rescued. In the last six months, record flooding has killed dozens of people across East Africa. In climate news, over 100,000 people have been ordered to evacuate their homes in Russia and Kazakhstan due to severe flooding. Major rivers in the region like the Ural and Tobol have swelled to record high levels. Reports say that some areas are seeing the worst flooding in 70 years. Storm Pierrick brought massive sea waves to the French town of Saint-Malo. This was yesterday. Powerful waves flooded the coastal areas of the town. The storm also disrupted a transport in parts of Normandy. Meanwhile, several areas have been placed under an orange alert by France's National Meteorological Service. Meanwhile, wildfires have engulfed the southern slopes of Poland's Bis uh, Bissa Mountains. Local authorities say that the fires have spread over two hectares of land. Forestry crews and nine brigades of firefighters have been deployed to battle the flames. Wildfires have also broken out in Venezuela's capital, Caracas. Several fires were seen at the Huarayra Repano mountain in the city. NASA's Earth Observ uh, Observatory has said that Venezuela has seen a record number of fires this year. Deforestation in Brazil's Amazon has decreased by 40% in the first three months of 2024. That's according to Brazil's Environment Minister Marina Silva. She added that the government will further invest $145 million to fight deforestation in the Amazon. Malawi's president has asked international aid agencies to help the country avoid a famine. This comes as the country reels under a widespread drought. Crop theft has become a problem as food sources dry up in the country. In the last month, Malawi, Zimbabwe and Zambia have all declared a state of disaster due to drought. Scientists are using an underwater drone to help survey the Great Barrier Reef. The drone will be using artificial intelligence to carry out the survey. This comes as Australia's Great Barrier Reef has been hit by a major coral bleaching event. With the new AI drone, marine scientists aim to conduct more accurate and regular surveys to better understand the impact of the climate crisis. On to business and tech news. Credit ratings agency Fitch has downgraded its outlook for China. The agency cited rising government debt for its negative outlook. Fitch says the Chinese economy faces a widening fiscal deficit. However, the agency has projected that China's economy will grow by 4.5% in 2024. A new report by the International Monetary Fund has said that economic shocks in developing countries are impacting the growth of rich nations. The report no noted that in the last three years, China's domestic shocks affected nearly 5% of the economic outputs of developed countries. The U.S. Federal Aviation Administration has launched a new investigation against plane maker Boeing. This comes after a whistleblower reported safety concerns with its manufacturing process. The whistleblower is a Boeing engineer who worked on the company's 787 and 777 jets. He claims that he was threatened with termination after he raised safety concerns with his bosses. Boeing has said that the claims are inaccurate. Meanwhile, Boeing's jet deliveries uh, sharply declined in March this year. The company delivered 29 planes to its customers last month. This is less than half of what it had shipped at the same time last year. Earlier, it was reported that quality checks and audits by US regulators had led to a dip in production. Jet deliveries of European plane maker Airbus rose by 12% in the first quarter of this year. The firm handed over 142 aircraft to its customers. Airbus also said that it received 170 new plane orders in the first three months of 2024. This includes an order of 33 A350 jets from Korean Air. 
Swiss pharma company Novartis is laying off 680 employees in its development unit. The unit handles the firm's drug regulations and quality control. Novartis currently employs around 12,500 workers in the unit in Switzerland and the US. The job cuts will affect 440 staff in Switzerland and 240 in the US. Banking giant HSBC is selling its business in Argentina to the country's fifth largest bank, Grupo Financiero Galicia. The firm has said that it will uh, book $1 billion in losses with the deal. HSBC has more than 100 branches and 3,100 employees in the country. The firm has been trying to simplify its business to improve performance. It has pulled out of many underperforming markets, including France and Canada. Tech giant Google has unveiled its first customized processor for data center Axion. The chip has seen, uh, is seen as a rival to the advanced data center chips offered by NVIDIA. The firm has claimed that Axion offers a 30% better performance rate than its competitors. It's also expected to be 60% more energy efficient. Meanwhile, Intel has also revealed the details of its new artificial intelligence chip, the Gordy 3. The firm claims that the new chip is 50% faster than its competitor, NVIDIA's H100. The firm also said that the Gordy 3 is capable of computing the responses from generative AI. Intel expects its new AI chips to come out in the second quarter of 2024. Microsoft has said that it will invest nearly $3 billion in Japan in the next two years. The firm plans to expand its artificial intelligence infrastructure in the country. Microsoft has said that, the parts, of it, uh, that parts of its fund will also be used to train nearly 3 million people on AI skills. Moving to sports, we start with cricket and the Indian Premier League. Sunrisers Hyderabad beat Punjab Super Kings by two runs yesterday. Punjab were chasing 183 for a win, but they were knocked out at 180 for six. Shashank Singh top scored for Punjab with his unbeaten 46 of 25 balls. The venues for England's upcoming tests in New Zealand were announced yesterday. The matches will be held in Christchurch, Wellington and Hamilton. These fixture, fixtures are part of the World Test Championship. England's test tour of New Zealand starts later this year from November 28th. In football, the terror group, the Islamic State, or IS, has threatened the Champions League quarter-final venues. The group has threatened to carry out drone strikes on stadiums. Police in London, Madrid and Paris have increased security in response to the threat. Spain deployed at least 2,000 officers ahead of yesterday's Real Madrid versus Manchester City match. Meanwhile, Manchester City and Real Madrid played out a three-all Champions League thriller yesterday. City opened the scoring through Bernardo Silva, but Madrid bounced back to take the lead before half-time. City's Phil Foden claimed the Player of the Match award for his goal that levelled the match in the second half. Bayern Munich held off Arsenal to a two-all draw in the first leg of the Champions League quarter-finals. Bukayo Saka gave Arsenal the lead after only 12 minutes. Bayern retaliated with an equaliser through former Arsenal forward Serge Gnabry. Harry Kane's penalty turned the tide for Bayern in the 32nd minute, but substitute Leandro Trossard restored parity for the Gunners. In tennis, men's world number one Novak Djokovic eased into the third round of the Monte Carlo Masters. The Serb crushed Rus Russia's Roman Safu Safiulin 6-1-6-2 in straight sets. He next faces Italy's Lorenzo Musetti in the round of 16. This is uh, Djokovic's first clay court tournament since winning the French Open last year. Meanwhile, men's world number three, Carlos Alcaraz, pulled out of the Mo Monte Carlo Masters. The Spaniard said that this was due to an injury to his right arm. Alcaraz took to social media to announce his decision. Following his withdrawal, Italy's Lorenzo Sonego was given an entry into the main draw. 
Indian tennis star Sumit Nagal is set to face Denmark's Holger Rune in the round of 32 at the Monte Carlo Masters. The two have crossed paths only once before. It was during the round-robin Group 1 Davis Cup tournament. Rune defeated Nagal in that match and it resulted in Denmark securing a 3-1 victory over India. Ace Indian shuttlers Chirag Shetty and Satwik Sairaj Rankiretti have withdrawn from the Asian Championships. This is because of a shoulder injury to Rankiretti. The duo were the top seeds and defending champions of the badminton tournament. They will next be seen in action at the Thomas Cup that, the, that starts on the 28th of April. Top Indian long jumper Murli Shankar will start his 2024 season at the Shanghai Diamond League. The multi-game event starts on the 27th of April. He will also participate at the Doha leg of the Diamond League on May 10th. In Doha, Shankar will be joined by world javelin champion Neera Chopra and another Indian thrower Kishore Jenna. In entertainment news, Zendaya says she had to become the breadwinner of her family at a very young age. In a recent interview, she said she lost her childhood by growing up too quickly. The Euphoria actor added that she has complicated feelings about kids becoming child actors. Zendaya entered show business in 2010 with a Disney sitcom at the age of 14. Dev Patel says that he felt ashamed of his Indian heritage in school. He made the remarks during a recent appearance at the Kelly Clarkson show. Patel said he was ashamed of his Indianness because it was not the coolest. Last month, the actor debuted as a director with his film Monkey Man. American filmmaker George Lucas will receive an honorary Palme d'Or at the Cannes Film Festival next month. It is the highest prize awarded uh, for, by the film's festival's organizing committee. The Star Wars creator joins a short list of people to receive the award. Last year, Indiana Jones actor Harrison Ford received the palm. The trailer for Robert Pattinson's next film, Mickey 17, was presented at CinemaCon in Las Vegas. The movie is directed by Oscar-winning South Korean director Bong Joon-ho. The sci-fi thriller is based on the novel Mickey 7. Uh, Bong said that the film revolves around a simple man who ultimately ends up saving the world. Mickey 17 will hit theatres in uh, the UK in January next year. The trailer for the musical sequel of the film Joker has uh, finally been released. It features Joaquin Phoenix as the Joker and Lady Gaga as Harley Quinn. The movie is scheduled to hit theatres on the 4th of October. The original Joker in 2019 had set a benchmark at the box office upon its release. It became the first adulterated film to surpass $1 billion in earnings. Meanwhile, Lady Gaga was recently spotted donning a stunning diamond ring. This has sparked rumours of her engagement with her boyfriend, Michael Polanski. Before dating Polanski, Lady Gaga had been engaged twice. She has been dating her current uh, entrepreneur partner for at least four years. Nicki Minaj's Pink Friday 2 World Tour is shattering records. It has reportedly become the highest grossing female rap tour of all time. Reports say the tour has grossed nearly $35 million in 17 shows. Minaj took to Instagram to share her, gr her gratitude to her dedicated fans. Fans of Rihanna's music should not hold their breath for her next album. In a recent interview, the singer said she has no plans to release her ninth album anytime soon. Rihanna added that she has been struggling with visual ideas for her music. The Grammy winner last released a music album in 2016. Lewis Tomlinson has refuted rumours of him dating Harry Styles. He recently opened up about his frustration with years-long romance conspiracies surrounding his One Direction bandmate. The singer said that these rumours have been irritating him for years. 
A script from the iconic American TV show Friends is headed for auction. The 76-page long script is from season 8 of the series. At present, the English actor Ollie Locke is the owner of the script. He's expected to sell it for six dollars to $10,000. A percentage of the sale would go to the foundation set up in the name of late actor Matthew Perry, who was part of the iconic show. That's all for this episode of Fast and Factual. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned to First Post. From impeachments to inaugurations, if it's a political story, we are on the scene. The race for the White House is heating up. We're beating Biden. How dare he say that? If it's breaking news, we're live with the latest coverage. From the White House, the State Department, and Capitol Hill, we know the issues, but above all, we know the players to bring you the latest in-depth analysis on all the key stories that we're covering. I'm Eric Ham. Join me from Washington here on First Post America.